luck. Luck favors those who take risk, but calculated risk. Pursuing any career is always a risk if we do not calculate it. And calculated risk can only lead to success. That's my personal experience and I'm sharing you after failing through numerous years and succeeding finally in multiple things. And then I'm telling you this fact that as soon as you graduate or postgraduate, you have to know this that you should not just take blind risk, you should take calculated risk. And career is the first risk which you take as soon as you graduate, right? So here are 10 things which you should think about, not worry about, but yeah, definitely think about and ask your mentor too. And the first one among them would be obviously the job market. Now, the market goes into recession, the market comes back from recession, the market booms and the market busts. But what will be its impact on biotech economy, bioeconomy? How the biotech economy, biotech job market will grow and in, in what, what direction? You know, um, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI says that you have to become so magnetic that people automatically come and get attracted to you. So that metric we have to follow no matter the job market. So you have to add so much value in yourself that no matter which way the job, job market goes, definitely uh, people should still hire you. But however, you should still ask what in what direction the job market is going to go in the near future and the next 10 years. Because if you know the probable job market trends and real trends, not fake trends, then you will be able to strategize and succeed faster. So there's a first question you should ask your mentor or you should think about is in which direction the job market is going, right? And that is the first point I wanted to share. Now, the second point is gaining practical experience in trending uh, topics. Now, uh, le let's first talk about real trends and fake trends. So like medical writing cannot be called as a real trend. It's a train which is going to die down or, or a fake train. But if I say that um, CRISPR or NGS, all these are real trends, like they're going to be the QPCR, right? So that is the real trend. So you have to first identify the real trend and then you have to get practical hands-on experience on those real trends. So you should ask your mentor, what are the practical trends? What are the upcoming trends which I should gain experience in? And that's the second point I wanted to share. Now, the third point which I have for you is salary expectations. Now, most of the graduates and postgraduates want to recover whatever fees they paid in their bachelor's or master's in the first year of the job, which will not happen. Okay. The market is not willing to hire you. You have to know this fact. Okay. It's like you go to the hospital, but the hospital is not ready to take you. Do you remember what happened in COVID era? The same way, the market, the job market, the companies are not willing because they're spoiled for choice. There's so many of you, right? So they may offer you lower salary. Initially, look at salary as an investment, not as an earning. Learn on the job. And once you have learned, create an impression in the mind of your boss or your employer that yes, you are a valuable employee they will definitely come and increase your salary. So that's my third point, which is salary expectation has to be very much kept in mind. And you can ask your mentor, what kind of salary expectation, expectation I should have as soon as you pass, as soon as I pass out. So that's the third point. Now the fourth one is for higher education. Like, um, so higher education is very important, right? If higher education is not pursued, see your career is like a plane right and your uh, education is the runway so the longer the runway the bigger the takeoff can happen and a longer and in, in a higher speed you can achieve success right so uh, you have to know this that higher education is important and uh, many biotech graduates or postgraduates feel that enough of padhai enough of studying I, let me stop it and let, let let me go for a job but at times specific jobs specialized jobs which is lesser competition goes to those who have higher specialization, right? But then again, do not do a PhD in fake topics, which just uh, get, gets you a job of a professor in a university. Instead, you have to do commercializable topics, which can get used by the industry. So that's where your higher education comes, right? So that's a question you should ask your mentor also. You should think about also, okay, what kind of higher education I should pursue? Now coming to the fifth one, and that is global competition. 
Now, what is it happening here in global competition? You see, uh, Biocon has their headquarters in India, but they went ahead and started a plant in Malaysia because Malaysia was more attractive destination to them. So all the biotech jobs of which would have gone and created in India now has gone to Malaysia. So the same way companies keep moving across the globe, right? in the hunt for cheaper talent and a better business environment. So you also have to be flexible just like the competition and be just like the companies and be ready for a competition. Your competition is not with the people around you. Your competition is globally. So you have to look at the global job trends, global competitive trends and be ready to be absorbed in the global workforce force, not the national workforce. See, uh, for example, if I say I will prepare for a bank PO exam and then I'll write the bank PO exam, I'll uh, become a bank employee. But now I am a national work. I am a part of a national workforce. But when you are a part of a, when you want to become a part of global workforce, that is where you can earn more. You have to get money from the rich country and feed uh, the people here, right? That's how it should be. So you have to be a part of the global workforce and you have to be aware of the global competition. That is how you will grow exponentially in the future. And your whatever money you spent in your education and your uh, throughout can be recovered. And in fact, you can make a profit out of it. So that's point number five. You should ask, how can I be prepared for the global competition? Now, the sixth one is updating your knowledge. So if I say, uh, how do I uh, gain all this knowledge, whatever I share in my videos is because Saturday and Sunday, I go into deep uh, focused learning experiences and speaking to experts from the industry. Saturday and Sunday, I invest on that. So what happens is I update my knowledge every day, every night, whenever I'm awake, I'm learning something. Same way you have to, uh, you know, learn wherever you go, you have to learn the latest trends, latest technologies, latest um, the requirements of, of the company, what kind of uh, jobs are coming up, how can I equip myself, so all this, you have to keep updating your knowledge as per the job requirements and the job skills which, which are being posted on Biotechnica. Because Biotechnica is the biggest platform in the world for biotechnologists and life science students. So you can go ahead and uh, analyze the job trends there and you can come to a conclusion, okay, there are more jobs being posted for say AI and ML in Biotech, so let me pursue AI and ML, so it's something like that. So you have to update your knowledge every day. That's the sixth point I wanted to share. Now let's look at the seventh point which I have and that is research opportunities and collaboration opportunities. So suppose you are in um, any city like Bhiwadi or Kolhapur or small city. Now you will be like my uh, there are limited opportunities in my city, right? So if there are limited opportunities, research opportunities in my city, I'll have to move out. You see, in India, there are three pockets. In US, there are five pockets. In uh, Europe, you have four pockets of research. So you have to be in those pockets, right? If you are out of the pocket, you will never get the right kind of research opportunity. So what are those pockets? I will share in another video. For now, I can tell you for India, it is Bangalore and uh, Ahmedabad, uh, Maharashtra, that is Pune, Mumbai region or Himachal Pradesh, Delhi region. So these are the three or four pockets you have for your biotech and pharma job. So you have to be in these cities to get a job. So you have to uh, pursue research opportunities in these cities and be open to collaboration with various scientists in whatever way is possible, whether it is a volunteer work, whether it is a paid work, unpaid work, doesn't matter as long as you are learning. So that's my seventh point for today. Let's look at the eighth point which I have. Now the eighth point is again networking. You have to network in a uh, you know, expansive way. I'll give you an example. So um, I wanted a speaker for our upcoming workshop. So I reached out to one of my friend. He has some friend and that's how the network built. And now I'm, you will not believe I'm talking to the CEO of the topmost AI in biology company in, bank, uh, you know, in India, it's in Hyderabad. So uh, I'm talking to the CEO directly and he is willing to be a part of our workshop. So you can imagine that how my network helped me reach him. Otherwise, he would not have been, even picked my call or maybe he, I would have never got his phone number, right? So network helps you grow. It's like Red Bull. It gives you wings. So you have to make sure that you are doing ample amount of networking every day. Your superiors, your seniors, your juniors, your uh, contemporaries, no matter who it is, you have to reach out and network and I have covered this point in extens extensive manner in one of my videos. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. Let's move on to the next point now. Now the next point for you is entrepreneurial ventures. Now 
most of the students mistake that the ultimate aim of a biotech degree is research and development. No, the ultimate aim of your degree is to start a company and a business which is profitable, which generates employments for a lot of people, which makes you profitable and helps you earn tons of money. I think that's the real goal of your education. And for that to happen, you have to be open to such opportunities. You have to be open when you do networking. Obviously, this always happens. So when you are open to starting a company, starting a business out of um, scratch and don't feel that nobody has done it. So uh, in my family, so how can I do it? See, many things nobody in your family has done. For example, a biotech degree, nobody in your family has done, right? So you did it, right? The same way, if uh, the opportunity comes to start a biotech company, why you are thinking that nobody has done so, I, why should I? In my family, nobody did even business, forget a biotech company, but I did it, right? So if I can do it, you can do it better because you are a better version of you. You are the next generation, so you can do it better. So always pursue entrepreneurial ventures wherever the opportunity comes because that's a great way to commercialize your degree. That's a great way to earn a lot of money because that's the ultimate aim of the degree, right? Okay, let's move on to the last point now. The last point which you should be asking to your mentor to you should also introspect is quality of growth of biotech sector in India. So when we started Biotechnica, the Indian biotech industry was $20 billion. Right now it's around $100 billion. So it has grown by five times like uh, uh, 600%. So you can see that it has grown, right? So in the next 10 years, it is supposed to grow to say $500 billion. So if the quality of growth is there, definitely you can invest your career instead of worrying and thinking that there is no scope and no growth. See, no future, no growth and no scope question comes when people are trying to extract more profit. There is more achievement in less time, right? Now, for example, in IT industry, if you get started, uh, probably in next, next five years, they will give you a lot of money. But in the next 20 years, they'll throw you out. Okay, so you should not look for a job which is temporarily giving you a lot of money, but in the future, they'll throw you out, right? You'll be jobless. I, I see a lot of IT employees on YouTube who are uh, who, are, who are thrown in the recession and now they have created a YouTube channel just trying to earn something, right? So what's happening here? You have to analyze the growth of biotech sector, introspect what you want from this sector and what, which part of the biotech sector you want to be a part of, right? And what skill set of yours matches, right? And what future skill set of yours will match? So all these questions you should ask your mentor, you should introspect and that will lead to amazing results for you, for your career. So I hope today's video was helpful and uh, you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section if you have further questions or if you want to reach out to me in person, you can always write to me at shaker at biotechnica.org. I always try to reply as soon as possible. However, because of my busy schedule, I may miss out. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.